don't really remember the first time I was in here, but I was in here constantly from when I was a child um, all the way up to the age of, I think, 17. And we would have many of our family functions here, and we would, anyone that was in the village that would have a party um, would have it here. My first job was here, and I remember Pete, who used to run the club, um, he gave me a, a job bottling up so I had to sort the bottles out into different crates and then I became a glass collector and I, I kind of, I think it was, I was just really intrigued by people. So I went to a school called Holy Family and it was a Catholic school and you know you're taught uh, in Catholic schools that God and church and everything is like the thing in life. Um, when I went to Cardinal Newman, I became an altar boy and the reason I did that is because I love the art in the church and I love to wear a dress, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and I was always, like I said earlier, I was really interested in people's um, lives and I thought funerals were fascinating because you would have someone's whole, whole life. When I was at school, I was bullied very badly. Um, I was fine in the village, there were a few situations um, and sometimes I didn't feel like I could go out with, you know, I think my first girlfriend, maybe, was over there. Um, <laughs> it was very hard to just be who I was, you know. You know, I had a family member thinking, um, I caught it from the television. Um, <laughs> um, I thought there wasn't any other gay people in the world. We had uh, my auntie's shop, Jeanette, her name was, and she was, <laughs> she was wacky. Um, she'd come in with football socks, heels, a fur coat, and she'd go out on the paper round after having sherry. I would literally go back, do a shoot for Vogue, come back to the village and work in the shop, just because I wanted to be with her, you know. She loved the art, she loved classical music, you know, she loved culture, and she was really, I think she was an amazing person. But other people didn't really know how to take her, so it's, you know, but that's like many of us. But she didn't care, neither do I. <laughs> this is where I used to play. And uh, this stream here, we would dam it. <laughs> we would fish. There were all kinds of like creatures in there. On a hot summer's day, we would just like chill out around here and kind of build the dams, let them go. <laughs> we were quite naughty. But um, I think growing up here really inspired me to look at nature a bit more. And I think when you're from the country, even though I moved into the big city at age 17, my favorite place to be is in nature. So these are Falongli's castle ruins. Um, I don't know how old the castle was, but I think it burnt down a very long time ago. And we would come here, we would all kind of play a game called Manhunt. And we'd all go and hide and meet back here, like at the end of the day. And we would run around the fields for like miles and then, you know, we were given 20 minutes to get somewhere and hide. One of my best friends growing up was uh, CJ, Christopher, your son. Yes. And we would come here on treasure hunts and um, we would always see you and you would see us in the fields and um, and that's how we, we met. Yeah, no, you used to come around here and play, yeah. So I remember him just as a little boy. I was amazed to see him more recently, how tall he'd grown. <laughs> <laughs> What's he like as a little boy? Quiet, quite quiet, quite mm. reserved. Yeah. Well, well mannered, well behaved. Um, some boys you wouldn't want them in your house when you turn your back, but he was well <laughs> behaved, so it's good. It's a wonderful exhibition, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's stunning, really stunning. I had an option of bringing the show to London. It's the sixth city it's been in in the world. It opened in Atlanta. It was at Miami Art Basel. It was in Reykjavik. For me to bring it back to Coventry was an amazing idea I think like I'm, I'm so happy I did as well and I think sometimes places do need it like you know London you have every single museum you, you know we have every exhibition going through I think art should be for everybody I think it should be seen in places not expected When I was a child, my father had an auction house in the Fosal area. All kinds of things would come through, and it was like second-hand furniture, there was antiques, there were all kinds of things, and I, I would go through all the boxes, 
and I would look at things and I would stare at them for hours, like just wondering how they were made. And, and his staff would come to the standard sweet centre every day for lunch. My dad would often bring me here and we would, um, I would stare into the, those glass cabinets over there looking at all the beautiful sweets. And um, remember I wanted to eat everything, try everything. And I, I found one thing that I loved, but the rest I, I always thought was too sweet. But then the samosas here and, and the shish kebabs are literally the best. It's the sauce that is the best thing in the world. When I was in India, I was craving this food. Coventry is a very multicultural city, and this is kind of like an icon of the city. I think it's one of the, the best places to eat, well, the best place for me to eat. You know, if I ever want food from anywhere, I always come here. In all of my work, it's a reflection of the world that I've lived in. So it's literally not always my experience. It's the people that have been around me and I share those stories as well as my own. So they're as much as my work as I am. And, and I think if you go around the exhibition, you realize it's really, I know it's got my name to it and it's there, they are sculptures of me, but you'll realize that it's actually about everybody else.